got? What you got? What you using? Let me see what products you got. Basic bike cleaning. Yeah. What you got? We twinning. We twinning. Wait, wait, wait. Yep. Simple green bike foamer. One. Um. Pedro. Pedro's toothbrush. Look. I'm a. I'm a one up you. How about this toothbrush? <laughs> Very useful. I've just torn through about 50 of those at the shop before and finally bought the good one. And it's probably cleaned 200 bikes and doesn't have any wear to it at all. Uh, you, use, you use that small end on your cassette? The, yeah, but I, the brush reaches all the way inside because it has the other side soft bristled. <laughs> this side is a stiff bristled, so. So I have the one like that, but blue with the softer bristles on top. I find that oh, that okay. doesn't get down in, probably cheaper than that. It doesn't get down inside of the, the cassette. Okay. All the way. Yep, and um, no chamois rag, the hand mitt. I have the whole Pedro set, but because of the price, I tell people don't buy it. Like it's 30 bucks on Amazon, whatever. It's, it's an investment, I don't know, 25. <laughs> But there's two brushes in there that people don't need in order to just get the big fat bristled brush. And it kind of looks like almost like a car washing brush. That is awesome. But no sense buy four more brushes to get that one brush. So this for $6 at Target or whatever, it's just as good. And you okay. can get your hand into where you want it to go. So as you, when you work, um, I'll just show them. They'll be able to see better some of the the products that we use now. Did you bring any lube? I have my toolbox, yeah. All right, so I like this. Do you have one like this? Cause you could just pass the chain on it? No, and not that, I mean, it works. There's nothing wrong to the average consumer, it works. I don't like putting lube where it doesn't need to go. And when you put it on the parts of the chain that don't need it, you just end up wasting. So All I right. like the ones so with tip. All right, do you have, so I have a tip, I have a tipper. Are you going to show them where to put on their chain? I sure will. All right, so I'll use that. Um, the only thing I probably have here that you probably don't have is, um, I use Goo Gone. Yeah, Goo Gone's great, especially for like road tar and stuff like that. I don't yes. need it in Hawaii, but yeah, that's definitely a great, that's an you awesome see? tip. Every time something goes bad, you say that doesn't happen in Hawaii. <laughs> Buy a new bike, move to Hawaii. Also good for taking off some of the bike stickers. Um, yes. From races. Nice okay. thing, actually, if you can. I mean, Gugan will never ruin a finish on a bike. It does mess up matted finishes a little bit because what they do is put a UV coating instead of um, actual clear coat. So UV coating, Goo Gone, I don't say ruins it, but it kind of, it discolors it after a while. So in sticker removal, best thing, heavy duty duct tape will take off the adhesive. Adhesive sticks to adhesive. I got, I got that in purple and red right here next to me too. You want me to pull that? All right, I will get it. I'll get it. What yeah. else we need? So we good? Um, I got my gloves because I'm a clean freak. I got the and gloves. I got the sock. Yeah, Sako. We didn't look. We didn't even plan this ahead of time. <laughs> it's it's like this was meant to be. And let um, me go. Let me go get the um rags. And the most important part of this entire process: leaf floor. I don't got that one. But okay, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna give you guys life hacks in order to do this. If you don't own a leaf floor. I'll be right back. Hi, Akira. Hi, Amy. Oh, who we got on here? Hey. Akira, Hi, Joy. Joy, Amy. I can't Good tell morning. you how much I need this class. No, <laughs> no, no, no. My, my bike needs some TLC. I need it as well, Akira, because, you know, my beaker is kind of pathetic right now, but <laughs> I can't even get into the shop to get a full tune up yet. Yeah, I just got, I just um, negotiated a same day tune up um, for Monday, but I probably still need to do the cleaning myself. 
Because I was okay. like, look, I cannot park with my bike for like weeks. That can't be. Oh happening. yeah, with with the way shops are backed up now, like I hear people like gotta make an appointment three weeks out, and then the bike ho- the bike shop holds your bike for like a week. It's like, yeah, I told them ridiculous. no. I said, to give me an opening. I'll bring it in that morning, and you give it back. Just hold the spot for me. Yeah. You know I'm I mean? actually trying to. Um, I'm bartering. I'm yeah. bartering. I'm doing a Pilates session for a tune-up. I will pay for the tune-up. I will gladly add in a Pilates session for the entire shop staff. I love One it. One cool thing, the shop that I help out at, I think they picked up somebody that, I mean, they, they know what they're doing. They're a former bike person, but they brought them in basically just to do simple bike tasks during this whole time that bikes are, you know, it's a frenzy to try to get anything done. And the guy's job is basically simple tune-up, and basic cleaning, you know, like your basic package at the shop, whatever, 50 bucks, 60 bucks. And that's all he does for eight hours straight. And they pay him good because the markup on, I'll tell you this, at a bike shop on cleaning is absurd. <laughs> like, <laughs> Amy, are you drinking? I like it. It's seltzer. Oh, I, uh... I, wish it was, I wish it was beer. I have a low grade fever for my vaccine. Oh, beer makes that go away. Yeah. Oh, so it's <laughs> it's a cold seltzer. But I oh, like to be better. supportive oh, when better. I have it. So here I am. Oh, man, nobody wanted to come take my class. I, I really want to know about the leaf blower. <laughs> but there's a few of us in here. I appreciate all of you. I wouldn't miss you for the world, Scott. I, I need to learn how to clean my bike. And don't Scott. worry, Camille doesn't know she just got roped into like a six part series. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm, I'm we're taking this up to like PhD level by the time we're done. We're going 101, 201, and by the end, everybody's going to write a thesis on bike maintenance. Nice. Okay. All right, y'all. I'm um, gonna, I'll send you guys the recording tomorrow, okay? Go enjoy your wine tasting, Lisa. Enjoy. I will. Thank you. Have fun. Have fun. Okay. Come here, what should we do? Give the standard five minutes? Give everybody that five minute window? I think so, 2.05. Okay. And then as they come in the room, since you'll be working, I could I could wing them in, rope them in, or bring them up to speed. I'm tired, it's like my third thing for the day. I'm gonna take a nap after this. Scott, what time is it in Hawaii? It is 09.01. Okay. Yeah, I just got off of work. Um, then I got to do a five-hour ride after this, or a 45-minute oh, wow. run off the bike. <laughs> well, we appreciate you. Oh, this is this is the best part of my day. I'm dreading the ride. Lily, how'd so, you do in your race? I did great. Um, I actually yeah. was, did much better than I thought. Um, I ended did up. Did I see nine seventeen slash nine twenty-two miles? Yeah, I was, th- I was thinking I was going to do a 1030 because that's what my training has been. And to see, um, and I started out, I was like, man, I'm going kind of fast. Maybe I should slow it down. But I was feeling good. And I was like, well, let me see how far I can take this. And I was like, oh, I got to the end. Yay. <laughs> awesome. Hi, Carly. I Ignore think Carly's said it. <laughs> I have to eat before another ride. We like when Carly comes because we see Disneyland. Uh, not not me. Wrong Carly. That's Amanda oh, is the one at Disney World. <laughs> sorry. Carly, where are you calling in from or zooming in from? 
I am in Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, wow. I've never been there. It's like Hi, Andy. Oh, that's Heather. Ooh, Heather already knows this entire class. I gave her like a 75 paragraph version of how to do this. Heather's in the room? Where's she at? I don't see her. I see Andy, Andy Sharp. Is Andy Andy or is Andy somebody else? I see Stacy in the room. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Lily. Hi, Dase. Hi. <laughs> there. There we got Heather back as Heather's name. Yeah, no, I have, like, there was two Zoom accounts. There's one that's a shared one with like my work, and I forgot that I was still logged in on that one. <laughs> You didn't look like an Andy. I'm so glad that you fixed it. I'm like, is Andy really Andy? <laughs> Hi, Heather. We got a few more minutes, Scott. You like two more minutes. Sounds great. I think when you tell people it's going to be recorded, that yeah. also affects attendance rates. And it's what, middle of the day in the East Coast, just after early afternoon, Midwest. I know people got stuff to do. So Scott, gonna... let me let me just ask the ultimate question that everybody asks you five times a day: Is Hanu going to happen? Yes, it's going to happen. Yay! It is going to happen. I was talking with the race director the other day, and pretty much the whatever city council or county council is going to approve it from from the last session he had with them. All but right, you of course. Course is changing, so be be aware. I've never done it before, so it's it'll oh, be for me. It'll be excitingly terrible because this is the worst version I think I've ever seen of it. But, oh, but don't tell me that. Are you going to be there? <laughs> no, I'll be in Idaho for Lexi's brother's wedding. Oh right, I forgot. I knew that there was something coming. I know. Up if not, life. if not, I would be there. But I just wanted to travel to Idaho twice in three weeks. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's so much better than going to Kona. Oh, man. I think let's get bike cleaning and maintenance one on one. Let's let us get it kicked off. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Um, let, it, let it fly, Camille. Let it fly. All right. So, one of the two main things that could um, really, really improve how you feel about your bike and how your bike perform is keeping it clean. And Scott and I thought we'll just kind of show some basic, simple cleaning things on how to clean it with very minimal effort, with very simple products. And you could have a clean bike, drive even with a leaf blower in under 10 minutes. And so as he does it and shows you what to do, we'll talk about some of the products that we have here. We actually happen to have almost one for one, the exact same products. And we'll share that there. And then he'll end it with showing us how to put chain, I mean, chain lube or lube or chain without wasting lube or putting lube in places that they don't belong. That's about right, Scott? That sounds great. All right, so first thing is um, a little simple mitt like this. You wanna show them yours? You could get it at Target, Walmart, dollar store. A little simple mitt like this. If you're a real foo -foo 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 person, put on some gloves. Some simple green, Bike clean, bike cleaner, or he doesn't have this. This works pretty well. This little uh, WD forty foam and wash, which is some quick wipe downs that doesn't require water. And you have your water hose ready to go. Oh yeah, it's over here. Hold on, let me grab it. All right. When you have yes, so when your chain is mucky or dirty, that affects your shifting. It delays your shifting because literally it has grime and stuff that it has to go through. So sometimes if you find there's a little lag or a little delay in your shifting, sometimes it could very much be dirty shifters or even dirt stuck inside of your, um, 
your shifters. Um, the other thing that if a clean bike or having a very dirty bike could cause, if you're wearing some pretty cute cure socks, it's going to get dirty. So if you want to keep your socks clean and you don't want to have to worry about the bike chain, grease stain that seems to never come out, keep your bike clean. All right, so he's gloving up. And usually right. if your bike is really, really dirty for the first time, the first place that you would spray this would be the cassette and the chain and then spray everywhere else and let, let that soak. That's what you're gonna do today, Scott? For the most part, yeah. I'll go through a little step-by-step. Step. I'll right. throw in a few other nugget, nuggets for you guys. Also, a clean bike is faster. Yes. Not just shifting wise, in order to get into the proper gearing, proper RPMs. What happens is, is you lose power in your drivetrain because of the resistance that you're losing in your wattage because of the actual resistance. You can go deep into mechanical resistance. Basically, dirty drivetrain, slower. You're putting out watts that you don't get back in terms of speed. Also, dirty bike, not as aerodynamic. Something to think about. So uh, while he's talking right. about aerodynamic, lip gloss make you aerodynamic too, because the wind just, just goes right off for of you. So <laughs> think about that too. Okay. So first thing I tell everybody, let me get my angle down. I hope I can get as close as I can so you guys can see what I'm doing. If your bike is, is extremely this, dirty, because this is what form. happens is so while he's doing that, feel free to ask questions. We'll jump in or I'll help but while he's, because he may not be able to hear you while he's running the leaf blower or the, or the hose. Um, whenever your bike's dirty, first thing I like to do, because the foaming degreaser can only do so much, um, and you're going to waste a lot of cleaner trying to get it clean multiple times, immediately just wipe the, wipe the muck right off of your chain. So just run it backwards, get as much of it off as you can. Run it through, you know, good 15 seconds, and you'll realize that's what it looks like. This is the dirtiest bike I have, so I apologize. It's a poor example. This is just one ride outside of the dirt that sticks to the loop. So get that off. Get it as much of it as you can off, especially big chunks of grease and whatnot. I'll teach you to loop properly so you don't end up with that. And get that chain nice and clean. There's a few other spots if you see chunks. I don't know if you guys know about your derailleur pulleys the little jockey wheels in your rear derailleur. What it is, is you can actually just take this, put a finger inside the jockey wheel, try not to get it off of its track or pop your chain off, but you can just run it backwards a few times and you end up with like that. That takes a lot of that muck off the jockey wheels. You can do it from both sides. Don't get your rag caught in your derailleur doing it backwards or you're gonna rip your chain right off. So just be a little gentle. That takes off most of that big chunks of grease, crap that's stuck to your bike. Now we can start the actual cleaning. First time through, take your trusty version of Simple Green Bike Foaming Cleaner or whatever else you might have. I highly recommend this product. You can buy it on Amazon or your local bike shop, support them. And you're just gonna coat cassette, chain, jockey wheels, and just get it in there, foam it on up. Someone asked, do you, um, no, he doesn't have anything there, but we know some people live in apartments or they clean it in the garage. So a towel or an old t-shirt works perfect to have underneath there. Yep. Lay it down. It's going to get all crappy. Just take it out to the laundromat. Destroy their washing machine, not yours. <laughs> so you're going to let that sit. It's just a foaming degreaser. You're going to watch it. Like I said, it's a poor example of a bike because it's not super dirty. But what it is, is it sticks. It's going to pull the grease. If your bike's really dirty, you'll start seeing it turn gray. I like this one time. Let it sit for a few minutes. It's going to pull your grease down. And as it's doing that, it's slowly cleaning it. It's like a, it's like my preliminary wash. It gets a lot of that extra stuff off. I spray it on my cassette, also on my chain, and around my chain rings as well. So it's going to start at least pulling a lot of that crap off. It's not super dirty, so I'm going to start rinsing it. Do not ever use a pressurized hose. <laughs> Make sure if you have a hose, you just want to miss. You're not full blasting your bike. I'll go into it about maintenance after about egressing, I mean, ingress of water and things like that. So this is my preliminary. I'm just going to miss it down, get a lot of that stuff off, give it a nice little rinse. Okay, now I've got 
what would be the majority of the stuff that was just stuck to it on, you know, now it's basically kind of running off. Now I'm going to hit it with a nice second coat. Then product placement, Pedro's toothbrush. I think the last time I checked $9 on Amazon, your local bike shop might carry it too. They carry most major tool brands. This thing, I, like I said, I've cleaned hundreds of bikes, my own bikes, probably dozens and dozens of times each. It still has no wear to it. You gotta clean it because the grease gets all mucked up in it. But this thing, two-sided brush, a little softer on the toothbrush side, stiff bristles for the parts you can't reach. Um, now you're just gonna run your drivetrain backwards and you're gonna stick the toothbrush in between each set of um, cassette cogs. And you're just gonna get as much of that grease off as you can. You'll start seeing that foam probably turn gray. Because your cassette's going backwards, you're gonna wanna run it on the back. It's gonna be the least amount of resistance, so it's the easiest to show. So I'm just gonna set it in there. Just rip it backwards, slowly go down the cassette. Hit over the chain, hit over the cassette, and then just work my way back up. You can change the angle of the toothbrush. It gets a lot of the stuff off. Now your cassette should be essentially 90% clean. That takes off most of it. If you let it sit a little longer, it obviously works a little better. I don't want this video to be two hours long. Then now you can hit the chain with the toothbrush. Some people buy special chain cleaners. Those work too. Not discouraging, especially if you already have it. But this works just fine. So you're going to line up. Take the soft end bristle, throw it on the underside of your chain, run it backwards. Put a little pressure just so you see the chain lifting, so you know the bristles are penetrating. Flip it the other way, push down, put a little pressure so you see the chain flexing. Now your chain should be about 90% clean. You don't really want to use the soft bristles too far into your jockey wheels because the bristles will get pulled in. So that's when you can switch to the stiff bristle brush on the backside, get into your jockey wheels and you can just run it along it, keep running it backwards, take mind of which way the jockey wheel is pulling so it doesn't pull the bristle into your derailleur and destroy a $800 derailleur. Yeah, don't and never, pull, gonna do it never pull, the, never tuck on the derailleur. Yeah, you're gonna do it to the upper and lower jockey wheel. Now at this point, I would get that mitt 30 but I don't wanna clean it after. You could take the mitt, depending how dirty your crank set is. I'm just gonna use this bristle brush. I also have a bigger version of this. It's a Pedro's as well. That works great because it's really soft. I'm just gonna scrape a lot of extra crap off the outside of my large chain ring. So your derailleur has a little, next to the, between the derailleur and the cassette is a little cassette, a little pulley wheel at the bottom. That's what he's calling the jockey wheel, Lily. Thank you. So I Sorry, I didn't explain that good. That, thank you, Camille. I got you. <laughs> um, now that that's there, but wait, we didn't clean the inner chain ring or the actual cog that the chain's sitting on. Little pro tip right here. Get it out of there. Shift it a few times. Pull your bike up, change gears, throw it back on. Now find that cog that the chain was in. Get that one nice and clean. So now you took care of that one, you shift your front chain ring, and all you're gonna do is just, same thing like you brush the outside of your large chain ring, now you can just start and run and brush the inside of your small chain ring. Basically at this point, your bike should be 90% clean. I mean, you put a little more time, let the cleaner soak in a little more, the cleaner's gonna get, you can repeat this process as much as you want. Some bikes I clean take three, four times to get this done. You don't really want a waste cleaner, but it does, it does need to be used. So don't skimp on it. It's $10. <laughs> then you're just going to mist it. I mean, I should get this back into the ring. I wanted it in. Okay. I'm just going to mist. Get a lot of that crap off. Get a nice and clean. Do not overspray your bike. All I'm doing is misting. And now to really get the cassette, all that stuff out, you're just going to roll it backwards and you're just going to hold the mist right next to that cassette and it's going to get everything off of that derailleur off of that cassette and then come back in here now that you got your chain pretty much clean from the large stuff 
come back with that same rag and you're just gonna same thing, roll it backwards. And now you're gonna get a little bit more stuff off. The more you can get off, the better. Change hand positions. You're gonna wanna pinch on top and bottom of the chain. And then you're also gonna shift your hand position and pinch the side of the chain. And you're gonna get as much, you're gonna see that chain go from black and grimy to back to silver or gold or whatever color you have. And for the most part, now your drive train is pretty much gonna be as clean as you can get it without completely stripping the bike and soaking all your parts. Here's a hat. If you have all um, um, oh, those no. loose missing socks that you only have one of, remember he talked about trying to get it on all sides. I find that if you use one of those, put your hand in the socks, you kind of can make, manipulate it and get it better on all on one sides. And Kara asks, are you supposed to do this after every ride? Um, okay. Every ride, I don't recommend, only because you'll waste a lot of cleaning product and a lot of change. I would say when rides are really dirty, you know, you go out and I know you guys got road salt in the mainland and just dirty, dusty roads you find. Um, I would probably do it every, I don't know, three, four, five rides around there. If you see it getting really dirty, like a bad ride, clean it. If it's just perfectly sunny conditions in the middle of summer, you could probably go a whole month without doing it. And you can just clean your chain, which we'll go over later, and just re-lube it. You don't necessarily need to strip everything off the bike in order to, because a, a bike needs lube. Lube keeps it from getting really binded. So I guess, yeah, maybe, I don't know, three to five rides if, if it gets consistently dirty. Definitely if you go into like wintry conditions or you have a lot of crap on your road, road tar, you know, pollen I've learned is a problem, get stuck in a lot of bikes or just really muddy conditions, get that stuff off. If not, just maintain the chain. A little bit of grease on your cassette and your chain is not gonna change the way you ride unless it's actually dirty. It, it's just naturally gonna turn that darker color. So not super often. Um, then at this point, I missed the entire bike. Do not spray water into places that they don't need to go. Main part, wherever your seat post clamp is, obviously it's different on tri bikes. And then your headset. Those are things you do not want to pound with water because if it goes in your seat post area, it's going down to the bottom of the frame. Most frames have holes for drainage. They don't really work. I can promise you that. So whatever water gets in there just is going to ruin whatever's in there. People have DI2 batteries, your bottom bracket, all that stuff. Your headset is actually an exposed bearing. It's a sealed bearing, so it's made to keep grease in and that keeps water out. But most people that know you sweat on your bike, on your trainer, and you take it to the shop a year later and they're like, wow, you blew your headset bearing. Oh, I don't even ride it outside. That sweat goes right through everything and just eats away at the grease and just rusts the living nonsense out of your bearing. That's so, you're not trying to spray water as if this is going into a car wash. It's just a light little mist on your saddle I tell a lot of people, I gave you guys on, I think one of the other calls, make sure you wipe your seat post clamp on the, the actual saddle. You're going to want that nice and clean, little mist, little mist of the wheels, hit the rest of the bike, mist it all down. Now, if your bike's really dirty for you mainland people, this is where you can get your egg, a bucket, some Dawn, dilute the, as much as you think you need. You can also use any sort of regular simple green, dilute that out. This is what I do. Works amazing. And you're just going to take your rag and you're just going to wipe, wipe it like you're washing a car. Nice plastic car. It's worth more than anything else. And you're just going to get it as clean as you can get it. After that, hit it with the rinse again. Now your bike should be, for the most part, clean. If you need to get it to certain spots, I love Camille's thing about the sock. That is amazing. That, um, hand chamois thing can get into most places get as much of that dirt out as you can i'm gonna show you guys a little bit more after that and one, now one, one thing scott oh, no. don't 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 go yet with the leaf blower a lot of us have been on our trainers and we spill in juice cheerios goldfish sweat lube everything so it's always good when you're on the trainer to put a towel over the uh heads over the help me out the handlebars, yep. 
and, a, and a towel, down. a sweat guard to catch right underneath the nose of your thing. Because believe it or not, your love juices go all the way down there and they rust the bike. So even though you're on the, in the trainer, you still need to protect the internal parts of the bike from liquids and sweat. 100%. You should work at a bike shop, Camille. But then again, you would have no business because you're telling all your customers to do the things that keep you in business. <laughs> so, exactly. I ride when I'm on the trainer, towel over my bars that covers my headset, and I use a thick towel, almost like a fast towel, because that soaks up more sweat without getting actually soaking wet. I know a lot of you guys like to ride sports bra and tri shorts, whatever. You know, you're going to sweat off your stomach. You don't realize that comes down. That goes like into your, your bottle cages. People don't realize that kind of stuff. You ever seen what your bike looks like after a race and you got all that sugar from the Gatorade and your sports drink and your hydration in those cages? I got bikes I can't even take the cages off at the shop I, that I do some work at. And now when they want to switch to a different cage because they want a specific hydration system, it's like, I can't get it out. It's rusted in. I end up having to drill out the carbon. That's a $400 fix you don't want for something that all you have to do is spray your bike down every once in a while or just cover it. Simple. The bike shop hate triathletes because uh, most triathletes bikes are filthy and they don't even want to touch it for a tune up. They want, they have to clean it first to do the tune up. So yep. you don't want them to have your bike in the corner because they don't want to deal with it. So yeah. So now I'm going to hit it with my best friend, the leaf blower. I'm going to give you guys a few hacks after I do this. I'm going to put myself on mute. I'm going to get this leaf floor going. What I'm going to do is blow one side, flip it, blow the other side, and then flip it back to the original side and get everything off. Finally, I won't be able to explain it because it's going to be loud and I'm going to mute it. But at the end, I'm going to hit the drivetrain really hard and I'm going to get all the nooks and crannies that I can in the brake under your bottom bracket where your tire tucks into your bottom bracket headset, computer mounts, pedals. Those things rust, people forget. If you can blow the water out of it, save yourself a lot of time and way less drying. So I'm gonna put myself on mute. I'm gonna hit this real quick. While he's on mute, he's a little extra. I don't blow dry my, I don't leaf, I don't even have a leaf blower. If I do, my husband got it somewhere. So that means put it in your garage in front of the sun and leave it out there for a second if you have to or you hit it with an extra towel. That's what most normal folks do. He's just, he's in Hawaii. So that's what they do in Hawaii. Hi, Leah. Thank you for joining us today. I didn't think I said hello. Oh, when? Uh, I think I had that done three, three, after three years because of all of the, when I went to a front hydration system, the bike got dirty and they actually had to rewire it. Um, that's to answer your question, Stacey. But you could, ask, we could ask Scott and see what he thinks as well. What's his take? I'm sure mine needs it by now. If we could use a hair dryer, I don't see why not. But I guess that's heat. I guess you put it on medium heat. Okay, that's I really hair serious. Hair dryer, so that's <laughs> some of us don't have hair dryers either. Sorry. Hello. I get you. You just figured out how to chat, Leah. Hi, Leah. A dog dryer. Can you video that and share it with us? Okay. I'll do it quicker than I normally would do it. There's still a little bit of water. I'm pretty OCD. That'll take a few extra minutes. What it is is by blowing the water off, first of all, keeps your bike beautiful because you won't get water spots just like your car. Also, is now you don't have to waste as much time wiping it down, which takes longer because every time your rag gets wet, you're just spreading water around and all that stuff. And you're trying to blow the water out of places that it gets stuck. Saddle clamp under your saddle, seat post clamp, brakes, drivetrain, bottom bracket crank, front brake, and most importantly, headset stem. 
if you can pressurely pressurize blow air into it, you're going to get more water out of it than you'll ever be able to get out with no matter how many rags you use. I'll give you guys my hack now. Not everybody has a leaf floor, obviously. Second thing you can use, I don't know how many people do any like home fixer upper stuff or whatever. If you have tools, you know, yourself, your husband, I don't discredit anybody. Everybody knows how to do what they do. If they have power tools, they probably have the detachable batteries for their drills and whatever else and stuff like that. They make a version of a blower called a contractor's blower or a job site blower. I'm not trying to product place, but those for like 50 or 60 bucks, you can pick up at a Home Depot, Lowe's, any of those things. Just buy the one that the batteries you already have fit. That thing is only the size of, you know, 12, 14 inches. You can put it away. It's not going to take up any space and it uses the same batteries as any of your power tools. That's an, a higher end step. That's what I keep at home. Next one is the air blowers for things like sleeping mattresses those are cheap get those at like target i think they're only 15 or 19 dollars i can't remember the last one i told somebody to order all it is is it's pressurized air with a blowing fan you don't need the attachment you can use it but it's just a little 15 dollar air pump because you need pressurized air i heard the thing about the hair dryer hair dryer will work i wouldn't want it because of the heat and it doesn't push enough cfm so something like just a the little blow up mattress pump those work just fine way cheaper you don't have to buy a power tool or anything like that just plug it into the wall and just blow all the water off your bike especially i know a lot of you guys up here like oh when you're cleaning bikes in the winter you guys can't go outside that's ridiculous right and your bike could get all icy and whatnot so if you're doing it in your garage or whatever spray it down outside really quickly or whatever even just you know get a spray bottle spray it down immediately blow all the water off now you don't have to worry about, you know, water getting frozen in there or anything like that. And it makes, like I said, wiping it down just that much easier. Now, a second take on that is once you regularly get in the habit of cleaning and wiping down off your bike, you don't need as much water. So if you, it, it, on a second floor an apartment or you have um, limited access to water or the winter time, getting a spray bottle and a mitt and just making sure that you wipe and touch the places that need to be touched and you don't necessarily have to be concerned with making sure water didn't get into those into the head tube or into down to the seat post. Um, so once regular cleaning happens, it, it's just, it's quick. Boom, boom, boom. Um, any other questions? I'm checking, checking, checking. Okay. All right, so now we're going to chain. We should be lubing the chain. We should be getting ready to lube the chain. All righty. So, biggest problem I see with the vast majority of people that bring their bikes in or friends that have cleaned their bikes because I'm nice and they don't want to pay. Um, I find that people over lube their chain. And what it means is a chain is just a piece of mechanical, you know, mechanical force being transferred. It's just, it's helping your force move, make the bike go forward. Here's a small section of chain. I'll get as close as I can. You'll see a lot of people, what they do is they take their bottle. I prefer bottles. There's all these other easy application ones. Not my preference, just because it wastes a little bit of lube, but it does make applying way easier and you don't have to have OCD like me. But what they do is they take it and they drag the chain and the lube bottle across the entire chain. If you look at your chain, you see all the plates between the circles? Those don't need any lube at all. Chain lube needs to go in right there, right inside that little section. Those are called the rollers, where the circles are and the plates attach. So the pin holds the rollers to the plate. The roller is what needs lube. So in terms of not over applying is it's quick and you see a lot of bike shops, mechanics, whatever, they just flip the bottle over, put it on the chain, run it backwards. I'll go, I'll do that real quick for you guys right after this. And there's nothing wrong with it. It works. But what happens is, is the more lube you apply, the more dirt you attract. So it would just be like, you know, having oil all over the engine of your car. 
put the oil where it meant, it's meant to go. Don't need to put it all over the engine. It's just gonna make for a dirty mess. So you wanna actually take your bottle and it takes a little bit of OCD and you definitely need a little patience. But what it is is you're gonna actually drip one drop on every single roller just like that so this is a wax lube a wax based lube that's all it is and all i need to do is go into that roller that's all the lube you need the problem is is you have like 105 rollers so get comfortable and get your yoga mat out because you're going to be sitting down for a few minutes i want to present um, an alternative <laughs> yeah um I'll show you guys a quick way to do it. I'm not going to do my whole chain. Nobody needs to sit here and watch me do that. Uh, so Lassie I brought up a good point. If you have a long ride on a Saturday and you're going to be going out, get your bike ready from the, the night before, the Friday before, um, and let the, because if you just lube and then you go straight riding, that lube ends up all over the place, but the bike, all over you. Exactly. Nice call, Camille. So I just start, I pick a point, most of you, modern day chains have a quick link some don't just depends which one you buy i pick a starting point or i'll put something small like grab my sharpie just put a little tick mark next on the chain so i know where i'm starting and i just hit it always i lube the bottom the personal preference my mechanic once told me how to do it that way and i just hit every single roller one dot at a time i do 20 links on the bottom rotate the chain backwards 20 links on the bottom Rotate the chain backwards. Once I'm done and I see I got back to my starting point, you're going to notice a lot of that lube already started to fall into the rollers. And then you just run everything backwards so that chain lube kind of disperses itself. And just, this is a personal preference of mine. I go and I take my fingers with my gloves and I just run it backwards in my fingers. So now I'm also checking what you're going to see is like a, I don't know if you get to see that. It's like a light gray. That lighter gray is, it's a little bit of dirt. Your chain's never going to get 100% clean unless you sonic clean it. It's just a little bit of dirt, but you know the lube's in there. You shouldn't see gunked lube on your hands. Or if you use like more of a liquid base, like the ceramic one I like, it ends up, you're just going to see like, I mean, it looks like you sprayed pan cooking oil all over your hands. Too much lube. That is a telltale sign of too much lube. Then come right back with it. So while he mm, nope, uh, continue. Go for it, Camille. There are trusted bottles like this that may seem to spread lube all over on the top, but they let out such an infinitesimal small amount that you kind of hit almost every little one and it may reduce your time that you need or your patience if you don't have any. If you notice, because this has also no drip, so it doesn't give, it doesn't waste the lube. So if you find that you put this and you rub it like he did and you still see more, not gray, but dark gruff, you put too much, then that lets you know that you shouldn't be using this and maybe you need to go dot, 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 dot. So you have to get what's good for your comfort level and your patience level. Um, but um, like he said, it's never gonna be completely clean and you're gonna see slightly gray. If you see completely black, you need to hit that again <laughs> with the cleaner, right, Scott? That means your initial clean was something to be desired. Yes, <laughs> So you need, your cleaning needed supervision. <laughs> You're gonna have to zoom me on a private call. Um, I charge consulting fees, you know, beer deliveries, all those things work. Um, after I hit it, shops do it because they're on a time crunch. Me personally, as like a personal mechanic to some of my friends, I let that chain loop sit and I'll just run this thing backwards for whatever minutes. I don't care. Put something on TV and I just let it soak in, soak in. Then I will come back later. I let it sit for a few hours because. A liquid base has to penetrate the rollers. The wax base doesn't go much further down, but it tends to stick a little longer. And then I come in with a, a rag and it's clean. So now I know. And this is where it's about touch. This is where it's practice. Same thing like cleaning the jockey wheels. It's all about touch. I'm not cleaning the chain anymore. So I'm not grepping down on that chain. 
all I'm doing is letting the rag kind of just drift along the top and bottom of the chain. And I'm just going to run it a little backwards. All that's I'm where my to do sock comes in. That's where I get, yep. that's where I use that, those old socks. I'm just trying to wipe off excess. It should, like I said, should still be just a little light gray, not dark black. And that takes off any excess lube because like I said, the lube's only got to be in the rollers, not on the plates, not anywhere else on that chain. And you'll notice too, your cassette and your jockey wheels and your front chain ring. You can look at any of the three. That's a telltale sign as if you, if you use too much lube or possibly not enough. I shift gears. And then I check where that chain was on the cassette. And now I see how much lube did it leave on that one cog? Or you can look at your jockey wheels and you can see, oh, how much lube is on the jockey? If it looks like you sprayed, you know, canola on it, too much lube. And you can look at your front chain ring. Also, if there's too much, then you just think about it. That's like spraying your bike with oil and you're gonna go out and ride. And the first five minutes, now dust is just stuck to all that liquid. And that starts the process of it getting dirtier faster. So the more of that you can actually get off, the better. So if you lose it a little too much, no big deal. Wipe some off with the rag, change gears, change front chain ring, wipe off whatever excess you saw in there, and then check it again. Now you probably should have the proper amount of lube on your chain. And now your chain's not actively attracting dirt and dust. You're just gonna naturally kind of get it as you ride, which is no problem because that keeps the dirt and dust from going in. It's just it's the whole reason why you have like grease in your headset and all those things. It, it, that chain loop keeps dirt and dust out, it keeps water out from the extra wear that's gonna happen on the mechanical moving parts. So at that point, I just think that same dry rag, the bike was already blown down. I don't think I'm gonna do it this in 101 class, maybe it'll 102. I'll put my bike on a stand. If you can't, flip it upside down. Please, goodness, do not ever flip a tri bike upside down with arrow bars. My heart breaks a little every time and a unicorn dies when you guys flip your tri bikes upside down on your arrow bars. That's a lot of pressure on top of something that's not made to have that much pressure. And I've seen people tip their bikes over and, I mean, borderline cracking carbon because it's not stable. You don't have to buy a $200 bike stand. You can just hang it off of something. You can flip it upside down, support the arm pads on your tri bike. So your arrow bars are actually above it. Arm pads are stable, and arrow bars are not, especially if your shifters are on there. I would take the wheels off, and I just I wipe everything down dry. That's all it is. I'm, I'm not trying to do anything crazy. It's like doing a, a flat tire change. Pull it off. Now you can wipe inside your brakes. You can wipe the wheels down themselves. You can wipe down in your um, seat. Your seat post area between your chain stays, your seat stays inside your front fork. I right, just wipe it. Dry, dry rag, microfiber cloth, anything. Get that excess water, dirt off. And you can use um Camille's that secondary bike cleaner that doesn't need water. There's another great product called Bike Lust. Um, I think that's a Pedro's product as well. Park Tool makes the same version of it. It's basically wax for your bike. If you're crazy like me, you wax your bicycle because bicycles are nicer than cars. You don't need to wash your car, you need to wash your bike. Um, and then that, that just takes it to another level. And you just, now you start seeing the, you know, a little bit more minute details. And you'll notice things when you actually take the bike apart, just a little, like I said, just take the wheels off, wipe those things down. You might see stuff like, oh, wow, my, there's a wear on the inside of my fork. Where's that coming from? Oh, the mechanic told me I should get bigger tires because they're more comfortable and they're technically faster, according to science. They are. But maybe you don't realize your bike wheel flexes and the tire rubs on top of your fork. You'll see things like that just by taking the wheels off and wiping it down. And you'll start noticing like, oh, something's not right. Maybe I should ask somebody or, you know, this and that versus bikes come into my shop, not my shop, the shop I hang out at. And they've worn not just the clear coat, the paint all the way into the carbon because they did not realize for months the wheel was offset just a little and the tire was rubbing for a thousand miles. And now the bike is rideable, but very, very unsafe because you don't know the structural integrity of that carbon anymore. All those little things you can find out just at the end of your cleaning, by taking the wheels off and wiping the bike down dry, you'll start noticing little things more about your bike that kind of keeps you, you know, in tune with what's going on. After that, your bike's clean, that is smooth, then it's ready to ride. 
So how many of you guys have deep rim? Stacy, no, you don't need a new bike. How many of you guys have deep rimmed wheels? So those attract dirt too. I don't take my tires off every time, maybe once every few months, but I would wipe it down and I would always spin it to make sure and I'll check where the brake contacts is if you have old brake contacts. And sometimes you can notice a spoke is loose. You can notice, um, um, oh man, I have a, a crack in my, like I have some zips and I noticed there was a crack in there. And so you could look and while you're just wiping down, you could actually inspect and see what's right and what's not right or what has changed since the last time. And then on your, one other thing I wanted to talk, um, Goo Gone. I think there's one even called Gooby Gone. And it's a spray gel. Um, if you have a very sophisticated paint finish or matte finish, this sometimes don't spray it directly on it. Um, or you could use duct tape. And you use those things to help you take off some of the bike stickers that you have from the races that we do, or decals, or sometimes just gummy stuff that you just can't get off. Just good old fashioned duct tape, just tear it and, and it comes off or some um, goo gone for your helmets as well. I think that was it. It's, it's an open floor now for questions. Do we, anybody have any questions for Scott? All right, I think we, anything else we needed to share with them? No, I think that I, I like the idea of the stuff about, yeah, checking your wheels and stuff like that. Like you said, it, it becomes a habitual process. The more you do it, just like anything else, then you start noticing things so it gets faster. You don't have to actively go down a checklist. But yeah, you take the wheels off, squeeze each spoke, and all you're squeezing two at a time. You'll tell if one is untensioned. It's a dead giveaway if one is coming loose or something like that. Shake the wheel. You may not even realize that the spoke is still there, but then the locking nipple on the, might be on the inside of the actual rim because it's an arrow wheel. It might be just rattling around in there and you're riding like, goodness, my bottom bracket's making noise again. What is that sound? Oh, it's a spoke nipple just rolling around in your wheel. Nobody likes loose hanging nipples. That's, that serves nobody any kind of good. Um, I have a quick question, but if it's, you don't have, do not take more than like one minute to answer it. I'm new to disc brakes. Is there, what's special about cleaning disc brakes? Okay, the main thing about disc brakes, there's a specific cleaner for the disc itself that you have to invest in. Disc brakes, you do not want to touch. Oils from your hands and stuff like that destroy disc brakes. It's because the brake heats up so much. It's the same reason I'm, I don't want to go too deep. You don't touch the, the bulb of your headlight of your car before you install it. Because what happens, that oil makes the light bulb pop. It, it, it compromises the integrity. Disc brakes are the same. You don't ever want to touch the disc. You can use that foaming bike cleaner. Try not to get it everywhere like you guys saw I, I sprayed specific places don't let it sit for 15 minutes either that's way too long um there's bearings everywhere in your bike also clamps everywhere in your bike the more you can avoid getting any sort of cleaner into it degreasers i do not care for unless you know really well what you're doing like heavy degreasers i'm not talking simple grace simple green biodegradable stuff but heavy degreasers don't use them unless you know what you're doing because if that degreaser gets into your wheel bearing or into your jockey wheel bearing, your headset bearing, guess what degreaser does to grease? It basically removes it. So you're going to be riding and all of a sudden you just have very tensioned steering. You have very tensioned wheel resistance. Like that's your bearings basically seizing up. So this brakes alone, there's a special cleaner for the brake itself. Also make sure most people don't realize you got to put a spacer in, in your disc brake if it's hydraulic. Mechanical, different. We won't go into that right now. Almost all bikes come with hydraulic disc brakes now. You need to put a spacer in inside your, between the two um, brake pads when you remove the thing. So you do not accidentally pull on the brake lever because what happens is, is the pads will do this and now they're stuck. Old school method, shove a screwdriver in, will destroy that brake pad. And you might also destroy your disc after that because you might scratch it and now you destroy the, not just the pad, but the disc itself. There's specific spacers made for every brand. If not, a shiny magazine cover, tear it off, fold it to the thickness you need, cut it with a scissors, shove it in. Does the same exact thing, won't cost you anything. 
Yep. Uh, or go to the bike shop, see what oil they watch them, see what oil they use for the hydraulic ones, see how much pressure they use. And that way you can do it yourself. If it's, if it's something new to you, um, what else we need? Oh, it's a question. Yes. Shifters. If you have old fashioned Shimano or even, um, Campano shifters, when you squeeze the brake, it opens up to the top. Or when you move the shifters, do you put oil in that area? No. So what I do, you de generally you don't need to service that other than regular service intervals. So when your mechanic puts in a new brake cable or shifter cable, I, I put grease, um, just standard bike grease, park tool, um, fill wood, white lightning. And I grease the top. So those, the ball ends of the shifter cable or your brake cable is what keeps it from going all the way through. And that's what creates tension. I put a little bit of grease on there because grease keeps water out. Water is what causes rust. Those are steel cables. So you don't need to do it regularly. If it does open up when you pull your lever and it's exposed, like that older nine, nine speed, 10 speed generation, then get your leaf floor or similar and make sure you just get the water out. They said, wherever water can go, it'll find its way in, right? We've all, you know, water heaters bust in the basement, whatever it is and that pipes. Water will find a way wherever it wants to go. Get as much of that water out of the bike as you possibly can. That extra five minutes blowing it off, wiping it down good, will save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars of damage down the road. Hey, Scott, just in case, can you say the difference between grease and lube? Ah, yes. So grease is going to be, oh, let me go grab it. Yeah, he can go grab it. Mine's downstairs, but grease is, lube is usually clearer in color. Grease is usually darker. That's a good eyeball check. Yeah, so grease is going to be poly-based, nice and thick. You'll see bottles like this, Park Tool. Every brand makes it. It's thick. I mean, this is the stuff. There's this blue. I'll wipe it off. You'll see that. That is very heavy duty. That stuff is made to stick and not come off. Bike lube is made for chain. That's why it's called chain lube. Chain lubes come in different styles. There's space. I call it wax based and clear. You know, and liquid based. Yeah, it's gonna be generally clear. Some some brands add certain scientific fancy stuff in there that gives it color. Rock and Roll's got a gold one and. Some of the other brands, WD-40 has got some interesting tinges to, depending. You need to figure out what works for you or I'm not going to lie. Every brand makes a good one. I don't recommend a certain brand to people. Whatever your bike shop got or whatever Amazon's got on there, just figure out if you need dry or wet. They both have purposes. Bike 102, class number two, we'll talk deeper into that. Um, it's endless because do you ride in wet conditions? Do you ride in wet conditions that get dirty? Do you ride off road? Do you ride on road and it gets wet? Do you ride in bone dry Arizona? Like the different types of environments you ride in will determine the different types of lubes you want to use. Some attract more dirt than others. Some last longer. Some have a little bit less rolling resistance. I put a specific one on when I used to race. I now wax my chains before I race because I'm not paying $200 to buy those crazy UFO chains. Um, it just depends what you, what you need it for and you buy the best product that'll cover most of your bases and you should be fine. Usually just one is fine for most people. I carry a bunch because different friends want different things. That's all. Well, uh, to wrap this up, one thing we need to talk about is tires. When you when you clean your bike, you always want to inspect, visually inspect what's going on with your tires and your pressure in your tires, your rolling resistance can affect you getting flat. It could affect how your ride feels. So um, make sure that you're airing your tires to the manufacturers, but also to your comfort level. And when you're washing your bike, check them out. You'd be surprised sometimes you're like, you could avoid a disaster just by giving it a quick little look over to see, make sure you don't have any gashes in places that shouldn't have gashes. Um, Cause that was one of the questions that came through the group, I think uh, the earlier this week. Oh uh, yes, Hannah, Hannah's question. Anything else? I think that's it. I think that's a wrap. Can I come to oh, your house? Always. You guys are all welcome to come stay anytime. 
I, I think that's, that's a better that's idea. Everybody just ship their bike to Hawaii or travel with their bike to Hawaii and just go to his house. He has the leaf blower. <laughs> Actually, the station has leaf blowers. I live in an apartment, so I don't have leaf blowers. I have the contractor's blower. But no, you don't want to ride in Oahu. Oahu is kind of dangerous. If anything, Maui and the Big Island, that's where you want to go and ride bikes. All right. Well, you know, we we put this on for you guys and you guys are here. We really are here for you. So if you have any questions, please ask. Other than that, I guess we could close it out and keep keep to our promise of sticking between two to three. I get I guess they're good to go. Everybody said thank you. You guys are awesome. Thanks for being an audience. I know I Heather. I feel a little chatty Kathy. Nice to meet you. Whenever you're washing your bike in the tub, can you send us a quick little video? Yeah, I, I sent pictures like that to Scott because I had I put it in the tub and then I was using a water bottle to do the more direct squirting. Worked. Heather's, Heather's become a pro at this. Amy, we hope you feel better and that your symptoms are, as soon as this call is over, they vanish. I know. Thank you. No, it's just, it's uh, from the vaccine. I should wake up tomorrow and be fine. All right. You guys, welcome. Scott, stay on, I guess, before everybody, well, wrap up before everybody leaves. Bye, guys. One thing? Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. One little life hack. I'll just throw it in there. Especially if you're washing your bike indoors or after a significant amount of trainer rides and it's too cold to paint outside or whatever. Standard spray bottle, whatever, $2, Amazon. Go there with water, spray it on the parts of your bike that get super sweaty, and just wipe it with a rag. You can mist it all you want. You're not going to get water all over your floor. It's just going to mist right on top where you want it. Wipe your stem, wipe around your headset. And like I said, seat post clamp and your saddle clamp. Wipe that stuff down. Wipe around your bottles, wherever your bottles are. Just a little water bottle sprayer. I mean, if you need to clean it better, a regular water bottle that you drink out of to get more water. Just a little misting water bottle sprayer. Spray a little bit on it. Bike glue, bike glue cleaner. This amazing. one works good. Um, yeah. the, you don't even need water. Bike foam and wash, easy spray. That one works yeah. good. Use it regularly. You don't realize what 10 trainer rides will do to your bike. And like I said, save you thousands down the road. Can I ask a question for a future of course, class? Um, so I'll be traveling with my bike for the first time this summer. And I'm kind of nervous on breaking it down and making sure I get it put back together where I'm no, the wheels don't fall off on me in mid rides. So if we could do another class, maybe in like May or June, that would be awesome. That teaches you how to break apart your bike. <laughs> I, I have a soft travel bag. What kind? You have a hard one, Scott? I have a soft travel bag, you can imagine. Say again? I have, I have all of them. <laughs> maybe that'd be a, maybe that'd be our second one <laughs> nah, it's hard because every bike is specific so i can't tell you exactly how to take it but i'll give you the the top 10 things you need to do on the disassembly and the top 10 things you need to do on the reassembly you know what i mean it's, i can cover all that stuff whether it be a road bike a tri bike the simpler your bike is obviously the simpler it is to take it apart and travel with it you know, we'll go over torquing, torque wrenches, all that kind of stuff. Find the proper tools for the job. That makes life a whole lot easier. I travel with tools even when I'm traveling to races, which kind of puts me in a painted, painted corner and I end up assembling everyone's bike. That's super fun the day before the race, assembling seven bikes. Cara, but you have a tri bike or a road bike? I'm taking my tri bike to Ohio this summer. So, so some cases, and usually the more expensive one, afford you to have less things to break down okay so there's some cases where you just have to remove the wheels there's some cases um you just put the whole damn bike in because everything fits there's some cases you have to take it all apart so well, i'll I'm message probably, you Kara. Are, did you buy a box already no i'm borrowing a a bike case for a, jamie jamie's bike case so okay she if might any, be able to a, help me since yeah clamshell right. versus major disassembly some minor disassembly the the hardest part about tri bikes is you have to take the front end apart unless it's a tri specific bike case mm -hmm. because the arrow bars and your arm pads it just there's nowhere for them to go in a standard bike case so 
we'll go over it. I'll, I'll walk you through it. We'll That'd have a little awesome. special, special session. I might also buy her dinner and wine to have her teach me too how she does it. <laughs> that is do you definitely use, a good incentive. Do you use pipe insulator? Like a, like a, this, the foam noodles when you're wrapping your bike, Scott? In my current case, I use maybe two of them just to protect my top tube and down tube. That's it. I have, you guys can look this up. If you guys got nothing better to do today. Bike Box Allen out of the UK makes a case called the Try Easy Fit. It's $900. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, but the more expensive, the less work. I, I only have to take the wheels off, but also my arrow bars are really long. So I have to pull the arrow bars inward, which only takes two bolts. Um, my previous bike box, Allen, I had to disassemble the entire front, but the case is bomb proof. They have videos on their website. They drop it off an overpass. The bike is still fine. Um, soft cases, I don't recommend people buy them. That's just your kuleana, your Hawaiian word for the day. That is your prerogative. Um, you know, everybody loves the Shikan, the Shikan try bike case yeah i'm not a fan i've seen too many bikes show up to our shop and you don't realize a crack handlebar on a tri bike standard tri bike whatever two three hundred dollars integrated bars that only are specific to that brand six seven hundred dollars because you use the soft case because you wanted to not take apart your bike and you wanted to not spend an extra 200 on the case but i, could I have a soft case as well that works amazing. I use it for road bikes because when I travel to places that I only can get small cars, then the bike case actually rolls up on itself. I can shove it in a trunk and I can put the bike in the back seat without having to rent a minivan or an SUV. Now I save $400 on the trip renting a cheaper car. And I take a, that's only if I'm going road biking though. Tri bike will not fit in that case. Not fun at least to put it up. You brought up the point together. I was going to, the car that you rent, Sometimes you could take down the back seat, even if it's a little Prius or something and then slide that, but make sure that that could fit your bike case because I've rented a car before that it couldn't fit in the trunk. It couldn't fit in the back seat. So um, thank you for asking at least somebody. I hope somebody took some nuggets away. Ooh, All we right, can have a guys. whole class about that, Camille. That'd be fun. I cannot hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> We just turned it from a six part series. This might be a 12 part mini series. Like we're going to go on Netflix soon. <laughs> I have to run. Bye guys. Thank you for everything. This was awesome. Bye bye. Bye Carly. Bye Stacy. Bye Jill. Bye Heather. All right. Let me stop the recording. Bye bye.